One day, while traveling north, one of the Arab tribes from Mecca met a hermit in the desert. Some of the men stopped to speak with him. Hermits were known to be wise and the Arabs often asked their advice. The hermit asked where they had come from. When they replied that they were from Mecca, he told them that Allah would soon send a prophet, who would come from their people. They asked the name of this prophet and the hermit answered that his name would be Muhammad and that he would guide them to a new way of life. Meanwhile, in Mecca, Amina, although saddened by the loss of her husband, felt especially well and strong as she awaited the birth of her baby. During this time she dreamt of many things. On one occasion it was as if a great light were shining out of her, and on another, she heard a voice telling her that she would have a boy and that his name would be Muhammad. She never forgot that voice but she told no one about it. On Monday, the twelfth day of Rabi al-Awwal in the year of the elephant, Amina gave birth to a son. Allah sends man many signs when one of his chosen prophets is born and on that twelfth day of Rabi al-Awwal in the year 570 AD, many such signs were seen. Some were seen by Jewish scholars who had read in their scriptures of a coming prophet. One of these learned men in Yathrib, for instance, saw a brilliant new star he had never seen before as he studied the heavens that night. He called the people around him and, pointing the star out to them, told them a prophet must have been born. That same night another Jew was passing by the meeting place of the leaders of Quraysh in Mecca. He asked them if a baby boy had just been born and told them that if it were true, this would be the prophet of the Arab nation. Amina sent news of the birth to her father-in-law, Abd al-Mutalib, who was sitting near the Kaaba at the time. He was very happy and began at once to think of a name for the boy. An ordinary name would not do. Six days came and went and still, he had not decided. But on the seventh day, as he lay asleep near the Kaaba, Abd al-Mutalib dreamt that he should give the baby the unusual name of Muhammad, just as Amina herself had dreamt. And the child was called Muhammad, peace be upon him, which means, the praised one. When, Abd al-Mutalib told the leaders of Quraysh what he had named his grandson, many of them asked, why did you not choose the sort of name that is used by our people? At once he replied, I want him to be praised by Allah in the heavens and praised by men on earth. Like many other women in Mecca, Amina decided to send her son away from the city for his early years to the desert where it was more healthy. Women from the desert used to come to Mecca to collect the new babies and they would then keep them until they developed into strong children, for which they were well paid by the parents. Among the women who traveled to Mecca to fetch a new baby at the time Amina's son was born, was a Bedouin woman called Halimah. With her were her husband and baby son. They had always been very poor but this year things were harder than ever because there had been famine. The donkey that earned Halimah on the journey was so weak from hunger that he often stumbled. Halimah's baby son cried all the time because his mother could not feed him properly. Even their she camel did not give them one drop of milk. Halimah did not know what to do. She thought to herself, how can I possibly feed another baby when I haven't got enough milk even for my son? At last, they reached Mecca. All the other women of the tribe to which Halimah belonged, the Bani Saad, found a child to take back with them, but not Halimah. The only baby left was Muhammad, peace be upon him. Usually, the father paid the wet nurse but Muhammad's father was dead. So no one wanted to take him, even though he was from one of the noblest families of Quraysh. Halimah did not want to take him either, but she did not want to be the only woman to go back to her tribe without a baby to bring up. She asked her husband whether she should take Muhammad, peace be upon him, or not. He advised her to do so, adding, perhaps Allah will bless us because of him. They started on the return journey and as soon as Halimah began to feed Muhammad, peace be upon him, her milk suddenly increased and she had enough for him as well as her baby son. When they were back home, everything began to change. The land became green, and the date trees, one of their main sources of food, gave lots of fruit. Even the sheep and their old she-camel began to give plenty of milk. Halimah and her husband knew that this good fortune had come because they had the new baby, Muhammad, peace be upon him, whom they had come to love as if he were their son. When Muhammad, peace be upon him, was two years old, Halimah took him back to his mother. She pleaded with Amina, however, to let her keep him for the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, sixteen a little longer, and to her great joy, the mother agreed. During his time with Halimah's family in the desert, Muhammad, peace be upon him,
played with her children and together they would take the sheep out to graze. At other times, however, Halimar would often find him sitting alone. It is said that on one occasion, two angels came to Muhammad, peace be upon him, and washed his heart with snow. In this way, Allah made his heart pure for he intended Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be greater than any man ever born and to become the seal of the prophets. In the name of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, did we not expand thy breast for thee and eased thee of thy burden which weighed down thy back, and exalted thy fame. So truly with hardship comes ease, truly with hardship comes ease. So when thou art relieved, still toil and strive to please thy Lord. Quran 94.1-8, when Halimar finally took Muhammad, peace be upon him, back to Amina, he was a healthy, strong boy. Later he would look back with joy on the time he had spent with Halimar, and he always thought of himself as one of the Bani Saad.